Welcome to How You Live It, a transformative podcast featuring best selling author, inspirational speaker, and minister, Dr. Rick Rigsby. And now, Dr. Rick. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to talk to you today about a very important topic, a topic that I think will enhance your possibilities for success. I want to talk about preparation and how I've come to believe that preparation is among the most critical skills one can develop. I learned so much from NCAA Collegiate Hall of Fame football coach R.C. Slocum. I was privileged to serve on the Texas A&M football program's coaching staff as life skills coordinator and also chaplain. Make no mistake, preparation in all phases was the key to success. Watching countless hours of videotape, looking for tendencies teams have in certain situations or weaknesses that our team could exploit. Preparation was the key. How you prepared in the weight room, how you prepared by knowing your assignments, how you would react to certain defensive or offensive looks, how you practiced throughout the week. I became convinced, friends, that how you practice from Sunday through Friday is how you played on Saturday. I became convinced of this one fact as well. Winning was not the result or based on how high you're ranked or the talent on your team. It was about one thing. How mentally prepared were you? How physically prepared were you? Division I college football gave me a world-class education on preparedness, but it wasn't my first class in preparation. Decades before being on the coaching staff at Texas A&M, I was a kid growing up in another coach's house. (laughs) <laughs> My dad may not have been a Hall of Fame football coach, but he was the wisest man I've ever met and a brilliant teacher of life's important lessons, lessons that he coached me up on every day, whether I liked it or not. And one of those lessons, a major lesson, was preparation. But I need to be honest with you. When you're a kid, you don't think your folks are very smart. At least I didn't. I'd get so tired of hearing those same old lines. I didn't want to hear lectures on civic responsibility. All I wanted to do was have fun, especially during my teen years. All those stories. And he'd repeat the same ones over and over and over again. I didn't know it then. My dad, that third grade dropout, the wisest man I've ever met, He was preparing his son for life. I can remember now with a piercing familiarity his simple, simple lessons. He'd coach me by saying the following thing. Son, you'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. How you do anything is how you do everything. Son, it's never wrong to do the right thing. Be kind to people. Kind deeds are never lost. Make sure your servants towel is bigger than your ego. And son, if you're going to do a job, do it right. I know grammatically it ought to be do it well, but I like the way my father used to say it. Son, if you're going to do a job, do it right. Today, I repeat the same stories. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? Today, I repeat the same lines daily. And by the way, I get the same looks from my own kids that I gave my dad. But the lessons are solid. The wisdom is formidable. His words were gold, solid gold. Which leads me to this podcast. As a motivational speaker and minister, my world consists of airports, hotels, and lots of travel. The science of travel efficiency has become sort of a hobby for me. For example, I rarely check a bag when I fly, so I'm thinking all the time, how can I squeeze more into my carry-on bag? How can I get more from less? How can I maximize every article I pack? I had a conversation recently, and someone asked me, how did your dad pack for those long voyages at sea? 
My father was a cook for a school that trained people to go into the maritime industry. California Maritime Academy, today known as California State University Maritime Academy, is located about 30 miles north of San Francisco in Vallejo, California. In order for the cadets to graduate, they had to complete an annual training cruise aboard the training ship Golden Bear. Now, upon graduation, these cadets get jobs as tugboat pilots and ocean liner captains. They staff oil barges and cargo ships. From navigators to engineers, they circle the globe on the seven seas. Each year, the Golden Bear visited exotic ports of call like Tahiti, the Fiji Islands, the Hawaiian Islands, the Galapagos Islands, Manila, the Philippines, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, and then the ship would make its way back to the academy on the Carquina Strait in Vallejo. During a 30-year career, my dad received a virtual graduate degree in geography. He sailed the world 10 times over, and to my knowledge, he never, ever forgot to pack something. Not once. So, how did my dad pack for those long voyages at sea? In a typical year, the Golden Bear would depart Vallejo around the week of January 20th. I know this because January 20th was my dad's birthday, and often we would have to celebrate early in order for my father to meet the departure date. Imagine this. For a three-month cruise, my dad carried aboard the ship one suitcase, just one, and he used that same suitcase for 30 years. A 1950s classic brown hard shell Samsonite suitcase with a key lock. No wheels back then. My dad would say this, and by the way, this saying also drove me crazy then. He would say, son, if you buy something cheap, you buy it twice. Isn't that true? By the way, I say that statement now with constant regularity, often driving my four sons crazy. Even though the ship would not depart until sometime around January 20th, you're not going to believe when my dad would start packing. The university, California Maritime Academy, would close down for a holiday break during the Christmas holidays, right? My dad would start packing during the Christmas break. That's right, a month before the cruise. Now, work clothes and work shoes were provided on board. Personal items were washed in the ship's laundry every few days. So, Dad would pack the following from home. Toiletry bag. That was uh, called a shaving kit back in the day. By the way, complete with skin bracer by Menon. I wear a skin bracer this very day. It's one of the cheapest aftershaves you can get, but the smell reminds me of my dad and reminds me of the basics that I want to execute every day to make an impact. Moving on, he would pack four pair of underwear, four pair of socks, four handkerchiefs, one pair of casual clothes, some casual shoes, some sandals, one sweater jacket combo that it seemed like he wore all 30 years. He'd pack a transistor radio and batteries for the radio. He loved to listen to international sporting events, especially baseball. He'd pack four cartons of cigarettes. He'd pack a lighter and lighter fluid. Of course, he'd pack dominoes, an ink pen, a writing tablet, envelopes, and stamps. And then he'd pack rubber bands and a flashlight. My father had the breakfast shift. Uh, He'd have to be in the galley, in the mess hall, and ready to start at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. Oftentimes, walking those corridors could be dark. He'd always be prepared with a flashlight if needed. Now, that was it. That was all he packed. And by the way, I would look at his suitcase, and even as a kid, I would marvel because everything was neat. Everything was folded and in its proper place. Everything was packed with a meticulous precision. Friends, you must understand that generation I'm speaking of, a generation of men and women that my parents represented, those were World War II veterans. They practiced profound basics that we all could benefit from today, like time management and responsibility and precision 
exactness, resilience, resourcefulness, and preparation. They didn't make excuses. They didn't blame others. They simply said what they meant and did what they said. When I was a kid, my father's actions made no sense whatsoever. Often I would ask, Daddy, why do we have to keep a rope in the trunk? He would say, Son, you never know when you might need it. You never know when someone else may need your help. Daddy, why do you keep rubber bands in your pocket? Son, you never know when you might need to fasten something. Daddy, why do you always keep a dollar in the glove box? Son, you never know when you're going to need some money for gas. Now, I realize that in the 70s when I started driving, gas was 20, 25 cents a gallon. So a dollar would get you at least four gallons, not anymore. I would ask, Daddy, why do we always have to be early? Son, you'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. Friends, because of my dad to this day, I always keep money in the glove box a little bit more than a dollar. By the way, because of my dad, the gas tank rarely gets below a half tank. When I travel, I always kick my tires, much to the embarrassment of my family. My dad did it. It made sense then, and it makes sense now. If you're going to travel a long distance, make sure that your tires are properly inflated. My dad had two sayings, two lessons when it came to preparation, and he wanted us boys to get those lessons. Every time I pack for a flight, including later today, I recite both those sayings, sayings that I could not stand as a kid. My father was the most prepared person I've ever met, and he taught us these two lessons. Here's lesson number one with regard to preparation. Son, the greater the preparation, the fewer the surprises. It's so basic. It's so simple. It's so profound. Whether playing against an opponent in a Division I football game or orbiting around the world in a spaceship or packing for a three-month tour at sea, the greater the preparation, the fewer the surprises. My dad was really saying the more you prepare, the more you'll be able to anticipate change and adjust to that change. My friend Steve Craigthorpe was a college quarterback then he coached quarterbacks for a number of universities. I met him when he coached at Texas A&M University. And he had a saying everywhere he went that he used to coach up his quarterbacks. He would tell his quarterbacks in the midst of all of the activity that surrounds the position of quarterback with linemen twice the weight of the quarterback rushing the terrier head off with plays that constantly break down, with you scrambling for your life. Steve Craigthorpe would coach his quarterbacks by saying, adopt, adjust, overcome. Adopt, adjust, overcome. In other words, the more you prepare, the more you'll be able to anticipate change and adjust to that change. Now, the greatest lesson on preparation and the most profound lesson that my dad taught me, we'll have to wait until our next episode. But I assure you, and you'll want to listen to Preparation 2.0. Friends, that's going to do it for this episode. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Rick asking the most important question I can ask. How you living? Are you ready to make an impact in your world right now? Do you want to stop existing and start living your best life right now? Dr. Rick wants to give you the first chapter of his best-selling book, Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout, absolutely free. Just go to www.rickrigsby.com forward slash free gift to get the print or audiobook right now. This is the podcastfactory.com.